Hey everyone, welcome back. So we're going to be continuing our talk about ranking methods and specifically in this video we're going to be talking about how do you evaluate a ranking machine learning model. So starting from something we do know, we talk a lot about classification and regression problems and we have pretty well established metrics that we have at our disposal in order to know whether or not our classification or regression models are doing well. For example, in classification, just to name a few, we have accuracy, precision, and recall which all kind of do different things, imply different things, uh, but at the end of the day, they're metrics we can use for classification problems. For regression problems, we have things like mean squared error, mean absolute error, other things as well. So that kind of begs the question, now that we're talking about ranking models and methods, what are the metrics that we are going to use to judge whether a ranking that the model gives us is in some sense good or bad, or if we have two rankings, which one's better than the other? So let me just set that up with a hypothetical example here. So let's say we're dealing with the ranking problem where the relevance labels are either 0, 1, or 2. So to be explicit, 0 means that this item is not relevant at all for the particular query. 1 means that it's moderately relevant, and 2 means that it's the absolute most relevant possible. Now let's say I give you two rankings, and they're pretty simple. They're just three items each. And I ask you which of these is better, in your opinion. So the first ranking is document 1, document 2, document 3 which have labels 1, 0, and 2 respectively. And ranking B is actually document 2, 3, and then 1. And the labels there would be 0, 2, and 1. So I ask you, you can stare at this for a second, which one is better? Well, it seems kind of ambiguous, right? If you look at this one here, it's nice that it has a 1 up here, but it's putting the most relevant thing at the end, so that doesn't seem great. If you look at this one, then it's putting the most relevant thing in position 2, which is better, but at the same time there's a big fat 0 at the top, so that's not good either. We need some kind of objective way to get a single number, a single metric out of both of these that's going to tell us which is objectively better under that metric. Now it seems a little bit ambiguous right now, but let's go to something in this problem that is definitely not ambiguous, and that would be if I asked you the question, what is the best possible ranking? That is obviously going to be this ranking here, where you put document 3, document 1, and then document 2. And the labels there would be 2, 1, 0, perfectly descending order in terms of relevance. To be explicit, this is the best possible ranking for this problem, because we're putting the most relevant thing in the first position, the next most relevant thing in the second position, and the last most relevant thing in the last position. So this is the best possible. So now we're going to calculate a metric called ideal discounted cumulative gain. And so this sounds like a mouthful, but uh, we're going to break it down and see why it's actually not too difficult to understand and why it's a good ranking metric. So first, let me just show you the form, and then we'll kind of break down the formula and talk about what each of the parts mean and how they work together. So the way you calculate this formula for this particular ranking will basically be 2 to the power of the first label. So you see the first label is 2, and that's exactly the label you're seeing up here. And then you do minus 1. You divide that by log 2 of 2. And this is basically going to be representing the fact that we are looking at the first position. So the first position, we're going to put a 2 here. The next thing, we're going to be looking at 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. This 1, again, comes from the fact that this guy is a 1. We subtract 1, and then we divide by log 2 to the power of 3. Notice the thing inside the log has increased by 1, and that's because we are now one position lower in the ranking. And the final thing, if you're following the pattern, would be 2 to the power of 0. This 0 comes from the fact that this is 0 minus 1, divided by log 2 of 4. This has incremented by 1 again because we've moved one more position forward, uh, lower in the ranking. And if we were to mathematically calculate this, pretty easy to do, we get 3.63. But I've basically told you nothing. I've done the thing on this channel where I try not to do, where I just throw a formula at you. So let's fix that by going through the formula and talking about why this makes sense and what it's trying to do. So I've kind of put these labels here to help us out. So the top things, all these numerators, are measures of relevance. So if you look just at the numerators, notice we're doing 2 to the power of 2 minus 1, 2 to the power of 1 minus 1, and 2 to the power of 0 minus 1. So these are measures of relevance. So the higher the numerator is, the more relevant that current document is that we're looking at. And there is also a version of discounted cumulative gain where you don't do this whole 2 to the power of thing minus 1. You just put the straight up relevance there and it's still going to be a valid metric. It's just that in most papers I've read, in most kind of studies I've seen, they use this form here, which basically upweights very relevant things higher than less relevant things. So this is kind of just a convention. But now let's talk about the denominators because I think that's where the real meat of the fact of why this is called discounted cumulative gain is. So the first numerator here is log 2 of 2. 
The next one is log two of three, and the last one is log two of four. Notice these are ascending numbers. So the denominators are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And what that means, because when you divide by a bigger and bigger and bigger thing, you're gonna have a smaller and smaller and smaller thing at the end of the day. So the story that this equation is trying to tell, as complicated as it might look at first glance, is that I'm going to give you points based on your relevance. So the higher your relevance is, the more points you're going to get out of this metric. But at the same time, there's a secondary phenomenon, secondary dynamic going on, which is that if your relevance is super high, you also need for your denominator to be pretty low in order for that to give you a lot of points. What that means intuitively is that we need highly relevant things to be at the beginning of the ranking, at the top of the list. It doesn't matter if you have a very relevant thing at the end of the list because your denominator is going to be massive and it's just going to cancel out and you're going to get a very small gain from it. And so that's exactly where this word discounting comes in. So it's called discounted cumulative gain because these denominators are discounting the relevances as you move lower and lower and lower down the list. So that at the end of the day, again, we get a metric which is going to be prioritizing two things at once. It's first going to prioritize that you have relevant things and more importantly, it's going to be prioritizing that those relevant things appear as close to the beginning of the list as possible, which is exactly what we want out of a ranking metric. We want to have relevant things up top. And we slap this word ideal on here because this is the best possible ranking. But we have really talked about all the math we need for this video. Now all we have to do is just calculate the same metric, DCG, discounted cumulative gain, on these two hypothetical rankings here. And that's exactly what we do here, DCG for ranking A and DCG for ranking B. So we can just talk through it. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, so let's talk about both of these. So the first thing we have here is 2 to the power of 1 minus 1. This 1 comes from the fact that this is a 1. And we divide that by log 2 of 2. Notice these denominators don't change. They're always the same discounting for all of these different possible rankings we could have for the same set of documents. Then we have 2 to the power of 0 minus 1, 0 coming from here, and finally 2 to the power of 2 minus 1. So this is one of those cases where I'm talking about where we have a highly relevant thing, but we have a bad thing happening where it appears at the end of the list, and we punish for that by basically giving it a big denominator by basically not letting it contribute that much to the ranking metric. And DCG for ranking B is very, very similar. And so we have 2.5 and 2.39, and the final thing we do to get normalized discounted cumulative gain is basically divide these DCGs by the absolute best possible DCG, which is this ideal DCG. We get 0.69 and 0.66, which basically tells us that the ranking A is better by a little bit under this metric. So now we have an objective way to compare these different rankings. And just for fun, what's the worst case? So if I ranked in the worst possible case, 0, 1, 2, I would get a DCG of 2.13 and an NDCG of 0.59. So you can see these are clearly better than that. So hopefully you learned about NDCG, Normalized Discounted Cumulative Gain, in this video, which is a very powerful and commonly used ranking uh, metric in the same way that we have these classification and regression metrics.